Hey everybody, Bill Allen, and I've got an amazing surprise for you today on the Seven Figure Flipping Podcast. I've got Walter Bond, who's giving a keynote speech to our Veterans REI Live event. So two days ago, I put out the podcast that I did on my wholesaling presentation for the event, and today I've gotten permission from Walter to put this out on the podcast, which I, I didn't think that he would say yes, but uh, I was sending him a text message a couple days before Veterans REI Live. He wasn't even on the docket. All these people uh, paid to come to an event to hear a real estate speakers talk about their niches. And um, Walter agreed to come in and close it all out with a keynote speech, just like he gave at Flip Hacking Live. So some of you heard him at Flip Hacking Live. Um, some of you have heard him on the podcast. Uh, I've interviewed him on the podcast before. Uh, his name's Walter Bond, professional uh, basketball player turned uh, professional speaker and is in the uh, speaking hall of fame, the public speaking hall of fame now. Just amazing world class speaker, and I don't think that you'll ha you'll ever hear a presentation like this on a podcast, on a Zoom call, anything like that before. It was incredibly powerful, uh, absolutely amazing message. Uh, really cool to hear him again, and I know that you guys are going to enjoy this. Um, he went for just a little bit over an hour, and I'm bringing the whole presentation to you today. So enjoy it, Walter Bond. Absolutely amazing. He's spoken at Flip Hacking Live. If you've heard him there, you know how powerful he is. If you've just heard him on the podcast, buckle in, strap in for this. This is going to be an absolutely amazing keynote uh, speech. And it's very rare that a keynote speaker will let you put their information out there. So I'm very thankful to Walter, to his wife, Antoinette, the relationship that we have. Absolutely amazing. And make sure that you stay towards the end. He's got a special treat for you. And then afterwards, uh, I open up an opportunity for you as well. So um, make like, enjoy this podcast. Let me know what you guys think. And I've got some instructions for you at the end. And if you want, to see him live after this, I've got uh, something at the end where um, I think, I don't want to give it away at the beginning of the podcast, but we may be able to see him in October down in Orlando. So uh, without further ado, enjoy this presentation from Walter Bond, world-class public speaker, professional basketball player, absolutely amazing guy, amazing man, and great coach and mentor of mine. So take it away, Walter. My name is Bill Allen, and I'm the leader of a group of elite house flippers and wholesalers called Seven Figure Flipping. We don't brag or show off our success, but instead let integrity and stewardship be our guide. We are dedicated to helping people unlock the freedom they desperately need. If you ask other real estate investors, they will say to keep your secrets quiet. But we believe in abundance, not scarcity. And that's why we are the elite. We are Seven Figure Flipping, and this podcast is our playbook. You know, first of all, I want you guys to know one thing. Bill Allen is a good man. And let me tell you something. I'm a Chicago guy. And so I, I, can, I can sniff a crook. I can sniff a bad person a mile away. And the one thing I've always respected and admired about Bill Allen, he's just a good dude. And we went to dinner. I forgot where we were, uh, San Diego. And, you know, it was time to uh, take orders. And I noticed Bill didn't order a drink. And I'm at a steakhouse. I'm thinking, am I going to do a martini? Am I going to have a glass of wine? And Bill's sitting there just drinking water. This guy didn't even drink alcohol. So you're talking about salt of the earth. And I love good people. And so anytime a good person like Bill asks me to do anything, I don't say no to the good guy. Because I believe a good guy is going to win at the end of the day. Okay? So what I want to do today is just tell you my story and connect with you in a way that you might not have even expected or even know that we could be connected. Now, I'm an award-winning Hall of Fame motivational speaker, and my industry is full of athletes who tell their story. But they're also full of military people who tell their story. The corporate environment, motivational speaking, is a $6 billion industry, okay? And people love to hear your story about how you joined the military, how you served in the military, what was your experience in the military. And so just something to think about, that your story is very valuable to a lot of people. And all I've been able to do for 19 years is perfect telling my story. Because within my story is a bunch of content. Within my story is life-changing applications. Think about it. I became one of the best basketball players in the world. I had a dream as a little kid, and I made it. So along the way, there were some success principles that I learned. When I retired from the NBA in three years, I doubled my NBA income in business. 
And now I'm a Hall of Fame motivational speaker. And I'm able to share my story with people in such a way that, wow, this guy did it twice, something amazing twice. And I come down and I teach you. I teach people how to have success. I teach people how to live their dreams. I teach people how to be what they said they're going to be in the third grade. You guys remember that? You stood in front of your class in school and the teacher said, well, Tyler, what do you want to be when you grow up? You know, Peter, what do you want to be when you grow up? You know, Nathan, Blake, I see your names. I see your faces, Megan. Your teacher asked you when you're about 10 years old, what do you want to do when you grow up? And some of you guys said, I want to serve my country. You know, I want to go to the military. I want to be a sergeant. I want to be a lieutenant. I want to go and serve my country. And many of you guys did it. And my hat's off to you. But you had another dream on what you might want to do after your military career was over. Because here's what I want to tell you about my story. When I was a little kid, I wanted to play professional sports. And when I was done playing professional sports, I wanted to make more money in business than I did in sports. I had that dream when I was 17 years old. And I'm going to tell you my story today so you understand exactly where I'm coming from. Are you guys ready? Are you guys ready to hear my story? Here's my story, and I tell it all over the world. I went fishing one day, and I do about 100 events a year. I talk for a living. So when I go fishing, I don't want to talk. I just want to chill out, crack a couple of beers, catch some fish, and enjoy the ocean. I'm from Chicago, Midwest guy. I'm used to lakes. Oceans are no joke. You can die on the ocean. So I always go out with a captain. I want somebody to know what they're doing, right? Because I want to come home to mama at the end of the day. So my captain talk too much. You guys been around them kind of people? Just do. You talk too much, man. I don't tell them that. I just had that thought in my mind, like, dude, you talk too much. I don't want to talk. I just want to fish. So the whole time I go out fishing, he's just looking at me trying to talk. And I'm being quiet. But this one day, I pull on this fish. And it's the ugliest fish I've ever seen. And I always ask him a simple question. I'm from Chicago. Can we eat it or not? That's all I care about, right? Can we keep it and eat it? He always wants to give me a history lesson. Well, Walter, that's a yellowtail. And that's a red snapper. And that's a mullet. And that, I'm like, dude, I don't care about all that. Can I eat it or not? So I catch this ugly fish. And I said, can I eat it? It looks crazy, but do we eat it? Oh, no. You don't eat these, but watch this. I want y'all to hear me. He took this fish and stuck it on the top of the boat. This fish had suctions on the top of his head. The head of the fish looked like a tennis shoe, like the bottom of a gym shoe. And the suction was so powerful, the fish defied gravity for five minutes. I kept fishing, and I was like, dude, we should get that fish in the water, right? And I said, man, what kind of fish is that? He says, Walter, it's a remora, also known as a sucker fish. And I thought to myself, man, that fish doesn't look like it can make it in the ocean. How in the heck does this fish make it? I mean, it, it doesn't look like it can make it in the lake. How can it make it in the ocean? And this is what he said to me, guys. Hear me clearly, because this is how I made it to the NBA. This is how I became an award-winning motivational speaker. He says, sucker fish are floating in the ocean waiting for their shark to come by. And when their shark comes by, they use the only resource God gave them to connect to the shark. I was like, you mean to tell me this fish, his whole existence is about waiting for a shark to come by? And to me, shark represents opportunity. Shark represents a mentor. Shark represents a coach. And as soon as he said that to me, I realized how I made it to the NBA. I realized how I became an award-winning motivational speaker. Ladies and gentlemen, I've been exposed to great coaches. I've been exposed to great leaders, and that's how I reached my potential in two totally different industries. The worst thing you can do is try to do anything by yourself. I can ask each and every one of you your favorite teacher, and you'll get emotional. You'll tell me about your third grade teacher who taught you how to read. 
You tell me about your sixth grade teacher. You gonna tell me about your high school football coach who believed in you, who pushed you, who held you accountable. You gonna tell me your stories about your favorite teacher. And some of you guys are who you are today because of your favorite teacher, a baseball coach, a parent. There was or somebody worked at the YMCA or the Boys and Girls Club. There was somebody in this world that had major impact on you. When this guy told me this story, I realized, man, this sucker fish is me. I am the sucker fish. And I've been successful because I got connected to sharks. I'm the youngest of three kids. My brother and sister were really good students. In my first high school, guys, I flunked out. My mother was a kindergarten teacher. And my dad was a high school principal. Do you guys realize how embarrassing it is to flunk out of a high school when your parents are teachers? Raise your hand, you ever been embarrassed? Raise your hand, you ever been humiliated? Raise your hand if you ever disappointed your parent. One of the worst feelings in the world I ever had was disappointing my parents. When I heard about this sucker fish, I was like, my, my, my. When I flunked out of my first high school, my dad said, look, man, tomorrow you're going to a new school. I'm a South Side kid. I hopped in my dad's car. He drove me all the way to the west side of Chicago. He pulls into this school. The first thing I noticed there's about 15 girls pregnant on the corner with some of them old school Indian ink tattoos. You guys know what I'm talking about? Not those cute butterflies y'all get at the, at, the, at the tattoo parlor. I'm talking about them old school tattoos. It looked like you did it yourself. And I'm looking at these girls like, why are y'all pregnant and why y'all smoking cigarettes? I was like, what in the hell have I done? I looked on the other corner. There's about 12 vice lords. Y'all heard about Chicago straight gangbangers. But that wasn't the worst part. The worst part is when I went by the principal's office. And he was 6'6", 240 pounds. Everybody else called him Mr. Bond. I called him dad. My dad transferred me to his high school in the hood. And I'm trying to tell you, man, that was the longest day of my life. I sat in that lunchroom and I ate lunch all by myself. And I realized I screwed up a great opportunity, man. My first high school was rigorous. It was academically challenging. My first high school was where Michelle Obama went. It was called Whitney Young High School in Chicago. And man, it was safe. It was great kids. And I realized I had blown a great opportunity. Raise your hand if you ever blown a great opportunity. Man, there's nothing worse in your life to look back when you screwed up a great opportunity. Anybody here ever got fired from a job when they were teenagers? Anybody here ever got cut from a team? Anybody here ever flunked out of school somewhere at some moment? Anybody here ever flunked a drug test and couldn't do what you needed to do? Anybody here been divorced and it was your fault? Anybody here had to file bankruptcy? Come on, talk to me. Stuff happens, man. And we all have blown an opportunity before. Raise your hand if that's you. <laughs> Don't look at me like that. We all have somehow, some way, blown an opportunity. And I realized I blew a great opportunity. Now I'm going to school in the hood, and I might get killed. They don't play in Chicago. Those bullets don't have names. And after about three days, my old man was like, look, man, I want you to write your goals down. I got in the car, and I said, Dad, I want to play in the NBA. I want to graduate from college. And I want to make more money in business than I did in sports. He says, okay, son, write those goals down. And I want you to look at them every single day. That's all I want you to do. Look at your goals every single day. All I want you to do is look at your goals every single day. And every morning in that car, my dad would ask me about school. That's all he would talk about was school. And he told me, I'm just as smart as my other two kids, but your value system is screwed up. You're just as smart as my other two kids, but your value system is screwed up. You are just as smart as my other two kids, but your family value system is screwed up. And this is what he told me. This family produces student athletes. This family produces student athletes. 
I'm going to ask you a question, Colin, Chris, Constance, Mark, Erica. What does your family produce? What does your family produce? You are a part of a legacy. It might have started with your mother, your grandfather. It might have started with your great-grandmother. I'm telling you right now, you are a part of a legacy. My daddy grew up down south. My daddy grew up using colored washrooms. My daddy grew up in segregation, and I was tricking off a great opportunity and didn't realize I'm a part of a legacy. And he said, your brother and sister are going to college. Now I can focus on you. Ladies and gentlemen, every day in that car, my high school principal would just talk to me about school. Oh, my favorite teacher is my high school principal. My daddy was a bad boy, but my high school principal was amazing. Every day, he set the goal and expectation, and every day he would hold me accountable. I'll never forget, we played the number one basketball team in the country. They had the number one player in the country named Marcus Liberty, and we beat him. I had 31 points. Marcus Liberty had 21. He had 11 boards. I had 13 boards. I played the number one player in the country, toe-to-toe, -to -toe, neck to neck number one team in the country, and we beat them. I went to school the next day. The high school is upside down, but all I wanted to do is go talk to the counselor. Hey, Walt, well, good game last night, man. You stepped up, man. You put us on your back. Thank you, man. Thank you. All I wanted to do was talk to the counselor. Here's why. I had a 2.9 at that moment. I was turning my academics around. I had a 2.9. And I went to her office. I said, what do I need to do to get a 3.0? She says, Walter, I was doing the math for you, man, but you're doing a great job now. But honestly, it's mathematically impossible. A 2.9 is the best that you can do. We just beat the number one team in the country. And all I cared about was getting that 2.9 to a 3.0. My daddy was right. I was just as smart as my brother and sister. But my value system was screwed up. It took a coach. It took a mentor. It took my high school principal to get my mindset right. So on that boat, when he said, man, the sucker fish is floating in the ocean and just waiting for a shark to come by, I felt like God was letting me know, Walter, you gotta go and tell the world this story. And you gotta help people develop what I call a shark mindset. Sucker fishes succeed when they get connected to a shark. Guys, then I went home and I started studying sharks. You guys know the sharks never stop moving or they die? In other words, you gotta outwork everybody. Why is Michael Jordan the greatest, he outworked everybody. Why do we hold Kobe in such high esteem? God rest his soul. He outworked everybody. So whatever career you're going to have after the military, you got to outwork everybody. If you're going to have a sharp mindset, you got to outwork everybody. I'm at my computer every morning at 5 a.m. I'm a Hall of Fame motivational speaker because I ain't going to let another speaker outwork me. I want to ask y'all a question. Whether you get into flip hacking, whether you get into business, don't matter. Are you going to let somebody outwork you? At my first high school, those kids weren't smarter than me. I let them outwork me. Academically. You guys know the sharks only look up? They don't look down? Which means sharks are very positive. And they don't deal with anything petty. You guys know some petty people, raise your hand. <laughs> you know some petty people who major in minors. Oh, man, I was able to grow and mature under my father's leadership because I was taught, man, you don't deal with petty. 
You don't major in minors. Sharks only look up, they don't look down. So you gotta be positive and optimistic at all times. Coronavirus, bring it on. COVID-19, bring it on. Entrepreneurism, coaching, speaking, whatever you make up your mind to do, don't you let nobody outwork you and you have a positive outlook on everything that you do. Why, because you're a shark, bro. Hey, sis, you are a shark with a shark mindset. You know, you guys know the sharks are curious and always learning. Sharks run the ocean because they smarter than the other fish. <laughs> Those other fish are dumb. Sharks ain't gonna come bite your bait. They gonna come bite you. Sharks bite humans, and here's why: because they're curious. They see fish all day, and then they see you at the beach, and they see your leg, and they say, "Hmm, what's that?" And they go investigate because that's not a fish. What is that over there? Is that a turtle? I love turtles. Let me go investigate what that is in my ocean. They take a bite out your leg and they spit it out because they think we're nasty. Think about it. Sharks like salty stuff. You rarely hear about someone getting eaten by a shark. But we always hear about shark bites. Sharks bite us. We're nasty and they spit us out. But they're curious. And they're always learning. How many books do you have on your nightstand right now? How many books have you bought and never read? When I flunked out of my high school, I had the same textbook as those other kids. But Tyler, I didn't open the book like those other kids. I didn't do my homework like those other kids. I would cram for test. I would wait to the last minute. And I would let those kids outwork me. They weren't smarter than me. And I walked out of that high school with shame. And it all had to do with my work ethic. You guys know that sharks, this is a good one, are made of cartilage, which means they are flexible. They know when to pivot. They know when to change. They know when to shift. You guys know why pro athletes struggle when their careers are over? You want to know the real reason? They stop moving. They wore a shark in basketball, baseball, or football, but when their careers ended, they stopped moving. As soon as my career was over in basketball, I kept it moving. <laughs> Next. 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 Oh, basketball's over, next. Okay, now I'm gonna make more money in business than I did in sports. Now I'm gonna be a Hall of Fame speaker. Now, now, now I'm gonna write books, now. When your military career is over, next. What else am I gonna conquer? What else am I gonna master? What else am I gonna pursue and dominate? In three years, I doubled my MBA income in business because I had the formula to be the best in the world at what I did. And what kick-started it, JV, Anthony, Young, David sitting there with your beautiful daughter, it got kick-started by my coach. It got kick-started by my mentor. You're just as smart as those other kids. A great coach is going to build your confidence, am I right or wrong? <laughs> a great coach is going to convince you and see your gifts and talents and abilities. So I went to the University of Minnesota on a college scholarship. I had my grades together. I was one of the top basketball players in the country. In my freshman year, I don't play a lick. And before I knew it, I stopped going to class. I started going to the parties, and I started drinking too much. The lowest point of my life, not only was I flunking out of school again, I wasn't even having success in sports. So my whole confidence, self-esteem, and self-worth was shot. 
But then my daddy called me on the phone. And he asked me a question. He said, son, you didn't play this year. Why not? Now, one thing about a C student, I'm sure you would agree, a C student's full of excuses. You guys know those kind of kids? An average person, honestly, is a C student, and they can justify everything. Well, I, I ain't like the teacher, Mom. The teacher didn't like me, Mom. Uh, the class was boring. I had all these excuses, and I really believed them. And that's why I was a C student. That's why I flunked out of my first high school. I believe these excuses. When I didn't play, my dad asked me another question. He said, son, you're not playing, why not? And I said, politics, dad, it's political. He said, son, how did your coach get paid? I said, well, he gets paid to win. He says, okay, son, well, if your coach gets paid to win, won't he play the players and give them the best chance to win? Dad, is mom home? He said, son, Go back and do what you said you're going to do. You told me you're going to graduate in four years. You told me you're going to play in the NBA. And you told me you're going to make more money in business than you did in sports. Are you working hard, son? Are you putting in extra work, son? If you can help that man win, you're going to play. Coaches and mentors, build your confidence but they also hold you accountable. He says, where's your goal sheet, son? Are you looking at it every single day like I taught you? Are you working hard every day like I taught you? Are you being positive like I taught you? You're not in high school anymore. You got to be flexible. Are you being a shark like I taught you? Like, no, Dad. Go back and do what you said you're going to do. I went back to my coach, and I said, Coach, what do I need to do to play in the NBA? He laughed in my face. He said, son, you don't play for me. And I said, I know, Coach. But next year, I'm going to become somebody different. He says, okay, son, you can't run, you can't jump, you can't dribble, you can't shoot, you can't rebound. I said, coach, I know I got weaknesses. But next year, I'll be your most improved player. Matt, that next year, I was his most improved player. That next year, we went all the way to the Sweet 16. That next year, I was considered the top six man in the country. I never broke the starting lineup, but he gave me an opportunity, and I took advantage of it. I turned one minute into two minutes, three minutes into five minutes. Before I knew it, I carved out a niche. Write this down, people. There's riches in niches. I carved out a niche. Flip hacking is a niche. For you to be successful in business, there's riches in niches. I became the top six man in the country. No one in America was better than me coming off the bench. I went back to my coach and I said, coach, what do I need to do to play in the NBA? Aaron, that list got shorter. When I came back from my junior year, once again, I was top six man in the country. No one in America was better than me coming off the bench. We went to the Elite Eight, and two of my teammates went to the NBA. I went back to my coach, and I said, Coach, what do I need to do to play in the NBA? It's my senior year, Coach. He says, Walter, I've never seen a player improve like you. All you got to do is stay healthy. If you can just stay healthy, no doubt in my mind, you can play in the NBA. First game of my senior year, Scott, I broke my foot. I had never been hurt in my life, Constance. I came back in six weeks and I broke my foot a second time. And my college career was over. I was on my way to get a job. 
I was going to be a hospital administrator. $75,000. Then my daddy called me on the phone. He said, you had a tough year, son. What's next? I said, dad, I'm going to be a hospital administrator. Then I'm going to make $75,000 a year, dad. I'm going to run hospitals, dad. He said, can I ask you a question? Nathan, I'm a part of a legacy and so are you. Samuel, you are part of a legacy. Vanessa, Jennifer, you are a part of a legacy. But then he asked me, he said, hey, man, do you think you're good enough to play in the NBA? <laughs> but, Dad, I never started in college. But, but Dad, I got a screw in my foot. But, 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 that C student was coming back. But they don't have seven points a game. But, but, but those kids are smarter than me. But, 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 but. He said, son, you told me you're going to graduate in four years and you did it. Son, you told me you're going to turn that team around, son, and you did it from the bench. But you told me you're going to play in the NBA. And you told me you're going to make more money in business than you did in sports. Proud of you, son. I'm going to ask you one more time. Do you believe you're good enough to play in the NBA? By the 30 second pause, tears began to stream down my face. Yeah, Dad, I do. Troy, you know what he told me? Go get it, son. Go get it. Go get it, son. Go get it. You guys have been writing the goals down today. Am I right or wrong? I want you to look at them every single day. Every morning you wake up, just take your goals out and look at them. Can you promise you that? Don't promise me that. Promise yourself that. That every single day, I turn a 2.1 to a 2.9, and my daddy said, just look at your goals, son, every single day. And he reminded me of what my goals were. And I was about to quit on my dreams. But my coach... My mentor, my favorite teacher, reminded me to stay focused. I went back into my coach's office. I said, Coach, what do I need to do to play in the NBA? He teared up. He said, son, close the door. When I recruited you, I heard you as a mama's boy. but you're not. You're the toughest player I've ever had. You're just like your daddy. You know the funny thing about it, my daddy never talked about his daddy. I, I don't know why. I don't know why. My dad never talked about his dad, but I have a suspicion. Why? Never dishonored him, but he never talked about him. And I talk about my daddy all the time. Because some of you on this call today may say, Walter, man, I ain't had no daddy like that, man. My daddy wasn't there. But here's the reality. You might be running the first leg on your family's relay race. Your family is a legacy. And when you pass a baton in a relay race, that first runner got to run the first leg. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I believe my daddy ran the first leg of the relay race. And when you go to track meets, you know what they yell at the track meet? Stick! When it's time for them to hand that baton, they yell, stick! 
and your job is to run 100 meters as hard as you can, as fast as you can, and when they yell stick, you got to hand that baton off to your teammate. I lost my dad to prostate cancer. When I was in that room, Megan, when it flatlined, Doug, you know what I heard? Stick! That's what I heard, Matt. Justice, that's what I heard, Vanessa. Stick! Now the baton is in my hand, Anthony. Now I gotta run as hard as I can. Now I gotta run as fast as I can. I got three kids, David. I'm 51. I'm gonna run this race as hard as I can, and one day my body gonna fail me. One day breath is gonna leave my body. And I'm gonna yell, stick! And I gotta hand some things to my dog. I gotta hand some stuff to my daughter. I wanna give my daughter integrities. I wanna give my kids work ethic. I wanna give my kids my faith. And I wanna give my kids some money. The baton is in your hand, family. Colin, Chris, Byron, Dennis, Jesse. The baton is in your hand, Andrew. What are you going to do with the baton in your hand? Today was an opportunity. Today might be the opportunity that you've been waiting on. Today might be the opportunity you've been looking for. I have screwed up opportunities and it's painful. When I was sitting on the bench, that was painful. And I went to my coach's office and said, Coach, man, I can help your team win. Well, son, you can't. I said, Coach, I can help your team win. Just give me a chance to play, Coach. I can help your team win. And I turned that one opportunity into an NBA career. Sucker fishes are floating in the ocean, waiting for a shark to come by. I came home from that fishing trip, an emotional wreck. My wife goes, how'd it go? Babe, it was awesome. And she goes, where's the fish? <laughs> I didn't catch any fish, babe. But God has shown me the keys to success. There's a reason why sharks run that ocean, babe. Sharks outwork every other fish. Do you know the sharks never stop moving? Do you know the sharks only look up, they never look down? Do you know the sharks are curious and always learning? Do you know that sharks are respectful and respect their environment? Do you know sharks are made of cartilage? Which means they're flexible. They know when to pivot. They know when to change. They know when to shift. But the best part about a shark, they know they need teammates. Sharks got one predator in that ocean that can take them down. Does anybody know what that is? Parasites. If a parasite gets in the gill, if a parasite gets in the nostril, it'll set up shop inside of a shark and slowly drain the shark of all of his resources. You ever had a person in your life that slowly drains you of all your resources? You ever had a friend that slowly drained you of all your resources? You ever had a boyfriend, a girlfriend? You ever had a family member who just got on your nerves and just drained you of all your resources? The sucker fish, when they connect to that shark, they get free rise in the ocean. When the sucker fish connects to that shark, that shark makes sure that they get to eat every time they make a kill. The sucker fish got one job to do. Eat the parasite. In exchange for free rising ocean and free meals, they keep the shark alive.
by eating the parasites. To get in the business is always going to be risk. Would you guys agree? To get into business, you always are taking a chance. So in order to be successful in business, the smartest thing to do as best you can, mitigate yourself from any and every risk available in business. And the best way to protect yourself from risk and losing is through mentorship and coaching. I flunked out of my first high school. I could have easily been a stat, would you agree? <laughs> I could have been just another Chicago kid. But thank God for my high school principal. Because this sucker fish connected to a shark. And if a high school dropout can write a best selling book, Title Swim. We sold 10,000 copies in nine months. You guys ever heard of Mark Victor Hansen? Yes, you have. You ever heard of Chicken Soup for Your Soul? That's Mark Victor Hansen. Do you guys know the first time I talked about the shark, the sucker fish, and the parasite? I was at an event in front of 3,000 realtors and he was backstage. When I came off the stage, he ran up and hugged me. He's like, dude, you got to write a book about the shark, the sucker fish, and the parasite. He said, man, this is like who moved my cheese good. You got to write this book, man. You know what I asked him, Doug? I said, well, you know, I've never written a best-selling book. And you sold $100 million. Kenneth, I humbled myself. And I said, Mark Victor Hansen, you just met a six foot five, 280 pound sucker fish. Will you mentor me as an author? He said, Absolutely. You got to write this book because it's going to help a lot of people. We called one publisher. We talked to one publisher for 15 minutes. Mark Victor Hansen coached me up on what to say, what to do, how to position it, what should be in the proposal. And in 15 minutes, Wiley Publishing says, we definitely want to do your book. Coaching and mentorship is a no brainer. Coaching and mentorship is a no-brainer. Now, some people think, well, you know, and I'm smart. I don't need a coach. Some people think, oh, I can figure it out. You guys know my first business. I failed and lost every dime from my basketball career. My ego was too big to get coached and I lost everything. Coaches save you time, coaches save you money, coaches save you from pitfalls, coaches save you from mistakes, coaches help save you time. And so at 51 guys, I'm on a mission to teach the whole world that Angelica, if you want to reach your potential, you better get a coach. Jesse, if you want to reach your potential, you better get a coach. Jennifer, with your hat on, I see you with your hat on. Jennifer, Constance, Cliff, I'm an Omar. If you want to reach your potential, Colin, you better get you a coach. I'm a living witness that without coaching and support, Nobody can do great things. And I'm going to prove it to you. You guys heard of Tiger Woods? 
He was the greatest golfer in the world. And his dad died. And what happened? What happened? Same guy. Same sport. The most mentally tough athlete we'd ever seen. Am I telling you the truth? On Sunday afternoon, Tiger Woods could be behind three strokes, and everybody knew Tiger's going to win. Am I right or wrong? When his father died, he fell apart. I noticed. Because I lost my dad. And y'all know how special he was to me. You guys know when Michael Jordan went to go play baseball? Right after his daddy died. On the last dance, he said it. Said, man, my dad loved baseball. My dad would always tell me I should play baseball. And part of Michael Jordan grieving was go to honor his father and play baseball. He didn't know what was going on at an emotional level, did he? All he knew, he lost his daddy. I miss my daddy. And so I'm going to go and play baseball. The greatest athlete of all time, the most mentally tough athlete of all time, was grieving and honor his father through baseball. So what do you think you're about to do without the right coaching? Honestly. What do you think you're really about to do by yourself on your own? Michael Jordan needed support. Tiger Woods needed support. You just heard my story. I needed support. I needed coaching. Now, this high school dropout is a best-selling author. This high school dropout sits on corporate boards. People pay me six figures to come to business meetings so they can take advantage of my mind. High school dropout. Sucklefish, whose shark came by. Are you with me? I want to share my screen because many of you guys here today hopefully really resonated with what my message is about. And I want to give you an opportunity. If you like my personality, you like my style, if you got this big dream and you know you need some support, I have two opportunities for you. One, we have a global mastermind. You know, you might say, hey, you know what, Walter, I'm going to do flip hacking. Fine, good. Bill Allen is amazing. I've been to his events. Dude, he's the nicest guy. He don't even drink alcohol. You can't lose with Bill Allen. He is salt of the earth, trust me. But some of you might say, you know what, Walter, I want to start a business, and I don't know if it's going to be real estate. All right. We have a mastermind, and we have people in our mastermind from all over the world. We got people in our mastermind from, from, from um, um, Baltic countries and London and England. We meet once a month, and we're going to teach you business fundamentals, okay? We're going to hold you accountable, okay? We're going to build your confidence. I got a Canadian guy in my mastermind who does flooring. He manufactures and sells flooring, and he's having issues with Home Depot and all these big vendors, and I, had, I, I coached him up. And I said, dude, this is your business. You control where your product is, is, is distributed. You control that. Nobody can bully you out of where your product is distributed. We coach business people. Why? Because I needed coaching. I needed support. So for you to reach your potential in business, you got to master fundamentals. In basketball, I had to master dribbling and shooting and rebounding. And every day, my coach helped me master dribbling, shooting, and rebounding. For you to be successful in business, you got to master the fundamentals of business. You got to learn how to sell. You got to learn how to market. You got to learn how to pick the right vendors. You got to learn how to build your brand. What's to be on your website? How to master social media. 
You're never going to reach your potential in business if you don't master the fundamentals. You need, to, you need to belong to a community. I can teach you through the power of association how to get your company to the top of the food chain using what I call the black tie effect. Accountability. Once a month, I check in with you. Once a month, you got to deal with me. In order to grow a business, you have to have strategy. How are you going to beat the competition, right? McDonald's beat Burger King. How'd they do it? Coke beat Pepsi. How'd they do it? I'm an award-winning Hall of Fame motivational speaker. I have global impact. How did I do it? I'm going to teach you the fundamentals of how to grow a business strategically. And finally, we got to get your mindset right. Everyone has a skill set, but most people fail because of their mindset. How do I know? I lived it. You're just as smart as my other two kids, but your value system is screwed up. Here's the best part about my story, guys. Because I know you had some people in your high school who said, oh, oh, well, who, Vanessa, oh, she just went to the military. Irene, oh, you know, they just, you know. There's people in your life right now, Marcus, that wrote you off. I know what that feels like. <laughs> when I flunked out of my high school, it was like, man, he flunked out. I was embarrassed. I was ashamed. And I did it to myself. But now I go back to the class reunions. <laughs> Scott, I see you with your headphones now. I go back to my high school reunions at my first high school. And I walk in. You know what they say now, David? Wow, man, Walter Bond is here. Hey, man, I see you on YouTube all the time, man. You're like big time. Now, but I failed. And my life got changed through coaching and mentorship. If you would like to join our mastermind, I got a special offer. The link is on the screen. All you gotta do is put that in the browser and to kick off your mastermind experience, I'm going to do a one-on-one -on -one session with you, me and you, one-on-one. -on -one. I'm going to get to know who you are, what you do, what your vision is, and I don't care if you're starting from scratch. I'm going to give you what my daddy gave me. How that sound? I'm going to give you exactly what my coaches gave me. I'm going to give you support. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to be real with you. I'm going to make sure your value system is right. But most importantly, I've been a sucker fish for so long <laughs> that I finally made up my mind to be a shark. We got any youngest kids on here? I'm the baby of the family. We got, we got any babies in here? I, I'm the youngest in my family. Oh, I can play little brother well. <laughs> oh, I can be little brother well. Trust me, my whole life I've been little brother. But you know what? After my daddy died, I realized, you know what? It's time for me to be a shark. <laughs> I'm over here always looking for coaches and always looking for mentors. And I, you know what? I made up my mind. I said, man, I got to stop taking and I got to start giving. I know what it means to be successful. I know what it means to fail. And I bet you there's thousands of people just like me that can relate to my story and want to leave a legacy when their life is over. The baton is in your hands and honestly, I don't know what kind of parents you had. I don't know what your family situation is. You might be, well, I'm more like your dad than you. I'm literally running the first leg for my family because my dad wasn't there. My dad was a drunk. My dad was an alcoholic. 
My dad left. And now, I got to start this race for my family. I mean, I work with car dealerships at a third generation, man, it's beautiful. I work with construction companies at a third generation, and it's beautiful. I want you to understand, my daddy started something down there in Tennessee. He started something down there in Tennessee. And when I was about to quit, he couldn't let me. When I was about to quit, he couldn't let me, could he? Because he had to yell, stick! And he had to make sure his kids were ready. I want to be your family's blessing. Because I want to teach you how to run your race. I want to teach you how to have that sharp mindset. And when you yell, stick, you're going to give your kids integrity. When you yell, stick, you're going to give your kids your faith. When you yell, stick, you're going to give your kids your work ethic. When you yell, stick, you're going to give your kids your attitude. But most importantly, you're going to give your kids some money, too, and you're going to have them equipped that they're going to grab that for time, and they're going to take this business you started to the next level. And your great-grandkids might be pushing you in a wheelchair and say, man, my, my grandmama started this company, <laughs> got out the military, and built this amazing company. Go give your grandmother a hug. Go give your great-grandfather a hug. This is a family business. And you're a part of a legacy. All you got to do is act. All you got to do is take advantage of an opportunity. Click the link, cut and paste it, put it in your browser. And I would love to be your shark. And I want to help take you places that you only dreamt of. I want to help you go places and reach your potential the way I did. Here's my final thought and I'm done. When I got inducted into the Hall of Fame for motivational speakers, Hutch, is that you? Hutch, was that your son sitting next to you? Hutch, your son is watching everything you do? I was at this table, had on my tuxedo, my mama was there, my wife was there, my kids were there. And in spirit, my daddy was there. And someone said, man, you going into the Hall of Fame? Oh my God, you're a Hall of Fame motivational speaker. Aren't you excited? I said, yeah, I'm excited. She said, well, you're not acting like it. You know what my answer was? For the first time in my life, I expected to be here. For the first time in my life, from day one, I had incredible focus. For the first time in my life, I knew exactly what it took to be the best in the world and what I do. And ladies and gentlemen, the only reason I knew it is because of my coaches. Click the link, sign up. We love to have you. And if you choose not to, I highly recommend you get your hands on a book called Swim. And in this book, it's a parable. And the star of the book is a guy named Drew. And as you read the story, I want you to remember my story. 
But most importantly, I believe this story is going to be you. There's a young man in this book who was struggling at 17 years old until he got a mentor. And the mentor changed his life. I'm going to give it back to Bill Allen. I don't know if we have time for questions or comments or interactive. I thoroughly enjoyed myself today. I've enjoyed connecting with you guys today. And from the bottom of my heart, I want your family, family to be blessed. And I want you to understand the baton is in your hand. You got to run as hard as you can. You got to run as fast as you can. And whatever you decide to do, just promise me one thing. That your ego's not going to get in the way. And promise me, Frank, you ain't going to try and do it by yourself, man. <laughs> if Tiger Woods needed a coach, if Michael Jordan needed support, I needed support. Trust me, you need support. You need a coach. It is the only way for you to reach your potential and build this legacy for your family while the baton is in your hand. Thank you. All right. How amazing was that presentation? Uh, absolutely, absolutely amazing. I mean, just listening to it again right now um, is uh, it's just unbelievable. That, that man is amazing. Amazing public speaker. Imagine if he can do that on a Zoom, imagine what he can do in person, right? So if you guys are on the fence about coming to Flip Hacking Live, don't be. Like Walter's going to be there. I'm going to be there. We're going to have about 20 different speakers like we do every year, three days. Absolutely amazing event. So make sure you grab your tickets. Um, you know, the offer that I made to the Veterans REI Live community, so a couple of veterans that I wanted to sponsor for Walter's program, um, I want to do the same thing for you guys. So um, you can follow the same instructions that I talked about on that video. So I think it's really going to move the needle and change things for some of you. So there's probably some people out there that are saying, you know what, this guy's speaking to me. There's a lot of things. For me, like coaching, mentoring, training, all that stuff is really important. Obviously, I joined the Seven Figure Flipping community about five years ago. I paid my money, joined the mastermind group and was able to grow a business uh, over the next couple of years. Just absolutely amazing experience. And now looking back, I want to figure out how I can help you do the same thing. So if you're in that same financial need, if you're in that same position that I talked about on the video, if you uh, can't afford it, but it's something that you want to do and you feel like it's the next step for you, then I want to personally sponsor two people. So I'm like personally, not the seven figure flipping company, not my blackjack real estate company, but me personally out of my pocket, I want to sponsor two people into Walter's mastermind group because I know what mastermind groups can do. They're absolutely amazing. And I think, um, you know, doing something like that for someone who this, who Walter was speaking to that you want to be a part of it, um, reach out to me. So follow the same instructions. You can go to my Instagram account at Bill Allen REI, follow me, send me a direct message and I will, um, I will answer you. I'll give you some instructions on how you can apply for that. So, um, just go follow me on Instagram at Bill Allen REI and uh, send me a message and tell me this is what you want to do and, and why. And then I'll give you some instructions on what to do next. Okay. So hopefully I'll see you at Flip Hacking Live. We'll see Walter at Flip Hacking Live. You'll be able to see him on stage uh, speak. It's, it's moving. Absolutely amazing. And everything else that we do, um, all the other speakers, all the other presenters, uh, the, the like, small groups, the answering questions, all that stuff is absolutely amazing. So you go to fliphackinglive.com, grab your tickets. And I wanted to put this out there before the prices go up on June 15th, the prices go up for Flip Hacking Live. So don't wait. Make sure you get your tickets right now. On, if you're listening to this, when we put it out on Thursday, on Monday, June 15th, the ticket prices are going up. So don't wait. You know you're going. Flights are cheap right now. We all want to have something to look forward to, to get out of our houses, to change the scenery, to do all these different things. So don't wait. Grab your tickets. Go to fliphackinglive.com right now and get your tickets. Okay. I'll see you guys on the next podcast. Bye. 
Hey, it's Bill again, and I want to personally invite you to our biggest event of the year, Flip Hacking Live. If you could copy the exact deal sources, marketing strategies, negotiation tactics, and business systems of the most successful house flippers and wholesalers in the nation, how would that change your business? Flip Hacking Live is a three-day event that we do just once per year, and it's happening October 15th through the 17th in Orlando, Florida. We bring in the nation's top wholesalers and house flippers to walk you through everything they're doing how they're marketing directly to sellers, how they're picking up discounted off-market properties, how they're doubling their close ratio with the right negotiation tactics, how they're raising millions of dollars in private money, the things they're doing that other investors aren't doing, all of it. These are the guys and gals who are actively doing deals at a high volume in today's market all across the country. You get their full attention for three days. They have agreed to hold nothing back and you'll be right there with them so you can ask questions and get clarification on anything that you need. This is your chance to hack the nation's top flippers and wholesalers and ethically steal their exact strategies and systems. All you have to do is take notes, ask questions, and apply what you learn. But first, you need to get a ticket. We've sold out every year and ticket prices go up every few months. So go to fliphackinglive.com right now and get your tickets today. Fliphackinglive.com, October 15th through the 17th in Orlando, Florida. This is an event that you cannot afford to miss.